Hi everyone, this is Konzel here and today we have for you guys the Nilo Math Guide 2. So Nilo Math Guide 2 is going to be very very straightforward. It should be a quick one because I have two main sections to cover although each session has a uh, quite a lot of content. But essentially what I'm going to talk about is we're going to look at the HP scaling versus the EM scaling on the multi-full core. And we're going to compare multi-full core's uh, performance along with uh, the other multi Another boost that Nilo would have, such as her passive as well as a C2, versus the performance of Hyperbloom slash Burgeon to let you guys see how competitive Bountiful Core is. Okay, I can tell you it's better. But how much better? And when can it get better? How do you make it better? Those are what we will cover here today. Alright. So first off, we all know that it's not easy to always ensure Nilo props the bloom. It could be the dendro characters or even the second hydro. In fact, I think it's a high chance that it's the dendro characters. Which is why you start to see weapons or effects that give team EM buffs so that you don't need to worry about that per se. But putting EM aside first, let's look at the impact of HP on the bountiful core damage. So this is a level 90 character with the wood resistance shred. Okay, so we are, we assume that the wood resistance shred has kicked in. This is the type of damage you're looking at. So the orange figure is the Burgeon slash Hyper Bloom. I put in both the Dendro Core and Bountiful Core so that you guys can see the comparison of how the what the HP does for you. Okay, so you see here, Bountiful Core. This is Nilo's uh, trademark, right? This is 30k HP, 40k HP, 50k HP, 60k HP, and 70k HP. You see how high the damage goes. It's actually 14.6k, which is a lot higher than the Dendro Core and also the Burgeon slash Hyper Bloom. In fact, at the 40,000 HP mark, you'll see that the Bountiful Core already gives you more than or better damage than Hyper Bloom, and 17,000 HP is 3x of Hyper Bloom. It's three times of Hyper Bloom, which is this. It's exactly three. Or almost exactly three, very very close to exactly three, okay. And but one thing to note that this is with zero EM and EM skill separately from the history scaling from Nilo's A4 passive on the bountiful core. So obviously I have to look at varying EM levels, right? But at least now you know that at zero EM, this is what the HP scaling does to his to her bountiful core. It's really really good. Okay, and this is with the recent buff where it's from 7% it's increased to 9% for every 1000 HP. Now let's look at the varying EM levels. So these are the figures, don't worry I have a better presentation uh, after this, but in case you guys want to look at the exact figures, at least in terms of the uh, every 200 EM, these are the figures. And why do I do it all the way to 1800 EM? Because it's actually possible to get 1800 EM on Nilo, uh, but I'll, I'll talk more about that in the next math guide. It's possible, but it's real territory. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think you should really fully focus on EM. Uh, but let's see how 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 it works out in terms of comparison. So you see here, there are some figures. If you look at 70 HP, 1800 EM, Hyper Bloom Search version is better. But if you look at 800 EM. 70k HP is better, right? The bountiful core is better than the hyper bloom slash burgeon. So how do we make best sense of these figures? Ta-da! I have a chat for you guys. This chat makes me feel like I'm giving a lecture, okay? But <laughs> nevertheless, we will do it because it's uh, it's still a better presentation. So you see, I want to bring you guys attention to the green line because the green line is the hyper bloom slash burgeon. You have this light blue here that is the 70k HP. Orange is the 60k and grey is the 50k. Uh, 40 and 50, 40 and 30k are there, but I don't think there's a real need for me to talk about those. So basically, from the chart above, there's a few things that we can derive. Number one, bountiful core always does higher damage than blood, hyper blue slash virgin until you hit 1250 EM, which means that when you have 70k HP, thanks to Nilo's passive onto bountiful core you always do higher damage than hyper bloom slash burgeon. So forget about what you <clears throat> sorry, forget about what you know about hyper bloom comps. Because with 70k HP, 
you will always do more than hyper boost until you hit 1250 EM, which is a very, very high figure to hit. It's almost impossible for uh, like full F2P players. Okay, 1250 EM. Now, SSDKHP, it goes much lower, it's 750 EM, the threshold. So, after 750 EM, Hyper Bloom still does more than body full call. When you have 60 HP. Now, if you understand about how the EM scaling uh, chart works, right? It's a diminishing return thing. While HP basically, the HP scaling from Nilo's passive on body full call basically pushes it vertically up. So, the lower your HP, the bigger the EM difference because of the whole diminishing returns thing. Once you hit the 70k HP, you'll see that you need a lot more EM. At 50k HP, it's 400 EM. At 40k HP, it's 100 EM. Okay. So, yeah, it's looking good for multiple calls. Especially if you go to 70k HP. Or even 60k HP. Because I know of F2P players, uh, the EM level is hitting around 700 to 800. Or even 600. So yeah, at least you know this is the KHP is there, right? So, whew, okay, it's a long session, but I have to do this, okay? So to summarize, right, if you are doing a bountiful call comp, it makes a lot of sense to pump HP on Nilo, so that even if she's not the one to trigger Bloom, she still increases the bountiful call damage pretty significantly, while at the same time, improving her own personal damage as well, rather than just focusing on EM for her. But not to worry, I will still compare a triple EM with HP success build versus a triple HP with EM build in future math guides. Okay, now that's in terms of like HP and EM. Okay, now Bountiful Core is actually very competitive versus Hyper Bloom. The higher your Nilo HP is, in fact, at 70k, 70k HP is in fact better before 1250 EM. At 600, it's 750 EM. So, by building HP on her, you kind of make it such that EM is less important. But obviously, the higher the EM, the, still, the damage still goes higher. And I'll talk more about that later here. But let's talk about some of the advantages of Bounty Core, Bountiful Core versus uh, uh, Hyper Bloom, Virgin, and the Dendro Cores. Bountiful Core, as opposed to the bigger radius than Dendro Cores, is easy AoE compared to Hyper Bloom, because Hyper Bloom in most scenarios is a single target, unless the enemies are sticking close to each other, then that small little explosion from Hyper Bloom can hit both of them. But other than that, in most scenarios, it is single target. Okay? But Bounty of Core is easy AoE compared to it, and with the bigger AoE, it's also kind of like a virgin replacement, without the awkward issues with DMC. Because we all know how Pyro reacts with DMC's Lotus, right? Now, most importantly, most importantly, the 0 0.5 second time to explode is really awesome. Basically, the moment the seed lands on the ground after spawning, it explodes. That's why there is no need for his, her bountiful call to react with Hydro or Pyro. Because you don't have the time to do it as well. It explodes the moment it lands on the ground. Can you imagine how fun that is? It's a boom 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 comp basically. So, with the math backing me up, as well as the feature of Bountiful Core, I'll say it's not an issue for her to play Bountiful Core comp. Why would you care about it being restricted from your person well and goes boom boom boom? Unless you don't have any Hydro DPS characters to begin with. And I can understand in that case you want a more flexible Hydro character. That's perfectly fine. But if you like Nilo, you should try to optimize her. And to optimize her, it's the Bountiful Core. Okay? Now, self damage may be a little concerning, but Hydro Resonance gives you plus 25% HP, so I'm not too concerned. But to be safe, you can put in a healer. I will test with and without when she is out, okay, when she's released. Now, most importantly, this is something I want to talk about. This is the most important, one of the most important points to bring away from this video. Going for HP on Nilo also helps reduce the EM you actually need on your other party members. Since it's typically a 200 to 250 EM lead over Hyperbloom Search Project at mid EM. What this means is that just having 400 EM on DMC and Kole on a Bountiful Call with Nilo having 70k HP, the damage that it does is approximately equal to 650 EM on your DMC and Kole for Hyperbloom Search Project. 
Now you can argue that hyper percent project you don't need DM. You say save 50 EA on that. That's perfectly fine. I understand. But you understand that I'm just doing a comparison here, right? It can be Nilo. It doesn't have to be DMC or Kole. It can be your second Hydro as well. This is just a comparison to show you what the HP scaling does in terms of reducing the need for EM on your other characters. Okay, it can be other, it can be any character, not just DMC and Kole, whoever it is that may be doing the uh, body full call proc, the bloom proc. Alright, I hope that's clear. Okay, can be DMC, comma, second hydro. Let me make that clear. Okay, because I know that there are people who are nitpick and they don't even read what I'm saying or they don't even hear what I'm saying. So, second hydro. Alright, now at 50k HP, it's actually on par. At 50k HP, it's on par. The 400, at 400 AM on whoever is pro doing the proc on the bounty full call, if Nilo has 50k HP, it actually performs the same as a Hyper Boom Slash Project in terms of damage. Don't forget the AoE, okay? But this is still good for bounty full call because if you remember, Hyper Boom Slash Project in the first place does 1.5x more than Rupture in terms of the base multiplier. So, it's still a gain. At 50k HP, your Bountiful Core still performs the same as a Hyperbomb version, which is already better. Better than it should be. Now, that being said, of course, it's still better to go for higher EM if you can on the characters that prop. But, without having test out the uh, rotation, I don't recommend people to go full EM yet. I mean, you can try to farm a few pieces of it, but, you know, don't need to go full EM yet. I mean, this shows you, right, the lead that the HP, going for HP on Nilo does for you. Oh, and by the way, for 70k HP, right, it's achievable with R1 signature weapon, and you really only need good HP percentage rolls on the Flower and Feather. So those are also arguably the, arguably the two easiest artifacts to get the desired stats. But what I noticed is that this assuming only base ER, base rolls for ER is required because I've not done the common energy math yet. Okay, my schedule is a bit whack uh, this week. So there may be some delay in the Nilo math guides. I apologize for that. On top of that, I have a neighbor doing renovation right now. It's very disruptive. Okay, so with C2, the difference between Bountiful Cause and Hyper Bloom Slash Burgeon will be widened even further since C2 only works for Bountiful Cause. Right? If C2 is factored in, it means that Bountiful Cause will perform even better versus Hyper Bloom Slash Burgeon. Because it only works for Bountiful Cause. It only works when you have the Golden Chalice Bounty. So once you have Golden Chalice Bounty, what do you have? You have Bounty for cost. So let's take a quick look at C2. Look at how the HP versus EM scaling works out. So these are the figures. You now see that at 1800 EM, 70k HP, it's still better than Hyper Blue. Previously, we were somewhere here, right? 800 EM, right? Now we have, or rather 1250 EM as the uh, threshold. Now, at 1800 EM, 70k HP body full cost still does better than Hyper Boom Slash Project. Yep. So this is the updated chart. The green line again is the Hyper Bloom Slash Project. Yeah. You see that it's now even lower than the 60k, the orange line. And 70k is a healthy distance away. Healthy distance above the Hyper Bloom Slash Project. And now 60k as well. Above Hyper Boom Slash Project. And realistically, if you look at it as a 1200 EM mark, or yeah, 1200 EM mark, you'll see that there's still quite a bit of difference between the 60k and the Hyper Bloom. Uh, wow, right? With C2, Bountiful Cores are always better than Hyper Bloom Search Project at 70k HP. The same applies for 60k HP. For 50k HP with C2, Hyper Bloom Search Project only does the same damage as Bountiful Cores from 940 EM onwards, which is uh, somewhere here. Yeah, I know the line kind of looks like it touched earlier, right? But I did the actual figure computation. It's 940 EM. Okay? So when you have C2, right? You can even go with 50k HP and 800 EM and you still do better than Hyper Bloom version with 800 EM. So I hope this shows you guys how good her C2 is for a core feature, which is the Bountiful Course. Oh, and by the way, the fact that 60k HP Bountiful Cost is always better than Hyper Bloom Slash Project and C2 is very important for C6 main DPS build. I'll talk more about this in this guide. Once you guys see the stats, you know what I mean. 
So what about the EM difference between C2 Bountiful Cause and Hyper Bloom slash Virgin? And yes, I okay, we're going back to the CCS build, right? I know that CCS build mats at 50k, but I'm a greedy guy, okay? I'm a guy who does optimization. When I do a main DPS permutation, I'm going to be doing it in a Bountiful Call. I'm going to try to optimize her damage as well as the Bountiful Call damage, whichever gives me the highest overall damage. That's what I want to do. And not just at C6, at C0 as well, from C0 to C6, basically. Okay, now going back to the next point, how about the EM difference between C2 Bountiful Cost and Hyper Virgin, right? Because previously it was 400 EM and 650 EM. The gap is almost doubled now. 400 EM on DMC, second Hydro, and Kole for C2 Bountiful Core with 70k HP is approximately equal to 850 EM on them. So the gap now is 450 EM. C2 plus HP skilling from Nilo, a passive, gives you a 450 EM advantage over Hyper Moon's explosion. That's huge. That is huge. And at 50k HP, instead of being on par, now it's 100 EM ahead. Now remember, because of EM getting diminishing returns, you get increasing returns from going to HP. You actually get increasing returns from going higher HP on the low because of EM having diminishing returns. Because of how the chart works, right? Remember I said HP goes vertically up, but the burden stays here. And because it's skill, it has diminishing returns on the second half here, the higher your HP, the bigger the difference, kind of. So it's like going HP for Nilo has increasing returns versus the EM scaling. And he's really good. Of course, it's always better to go for higher EM. I'm just giving you guys a view, right? If you go for mid EM on in a bountiful call on your other characters, even if we don't know who will proc it yet, right? Versus say something like a hyper broom build where you only have one character that's doing the proc and always doing that that proc. But it's kind of offset by the fact that you only need a mid level EM. You need a mid level EM for them to perform better than a pretty high EM. In a hyper boom says Burgeon Pill. And this mid level EM can be achievable via team buffs. That's why my recommendation is to get 300 to 400 EM if you don't want to overuse invest in EM on the other characters first and wait for the actual testing to see the actual prod distribution amongst team members. For me personally, my Kole is at 300 plus EM right now. I have not gone full EM on her. DMC with Favonians is at about 600 EM, 590 plus, I think. And I can go higher for both. But I will wait and see first. I'll probably try to find a, a few pieces for them in the meantime. But I'll wait and see first before competing, per se. Now, Kokomi I have not explored yet, but I know I have EM plus HP stats on Tenacity while I was farming for Cookie and Yalam. Yeah. But even if you go, even if you don't go higher EM, you don't go super invested on EM on these characters, 300 to 400 EM is still more than the uh, arguably almost highly invested EM for Hyper Moon slash Virgin. Okay? So I hope you guys see why going for high HP on Nilo is very important. Okay, now let's all go on to the TLDR. It's a bit of a long, but basically, if you are do if you are doing a Bountiful Call, you miss a lot of sense to pump HP on Nilo, so that even if she's not the one to trigger Bloom, she still increases the Bountiful Call damage pretty significantly, while at the same time improving her personal damage as well, rather than focusing on EM for her. The high low Nilo's HP, the higher the EM required for Hyper Bloom Test Virgin to be better than Bountiful Cost. At 70k HP, it's 1300 EM or 1250. Sorry, if I want to be at that, it's 1250. Okay, 60k HP is 750 EM. Bountiful Core is also AoE. It's bigger AoE than Dendro Core. It explodes really fast. It's 0 0.5 seconds, about there about. And you don't have to worry about a second step reaction. Okay, you don't need to do a second step reaction. You don't need to worry about messing up Virgin Q in the case of Virgin. Uh, sorry, DMC Q in the case of Virgin. Please refer to the specific session for more details, especially for the chart comparison. If this is too much text for you, you want a visual representation, look at the chart in the specific session. Now, going for HP on Nilo also helps reduce the EM you need on your other party members, since it's typically a 200 to 250 EM lead over Hyperboom's Virgin and BEM. So 400 EM Bountiful Core is approximately equal to a 650 EM Hyperboom slash Virgin and 70k HP. 
and approximately 400 EM at 50 HP. So at 50 HP is on par at 70 HP. It's, it has a 250 EM lead over Hyperboom Chest Burgeon. It's pretty crazy to be honest. Now, but that being, that being said, <clears throat> it's still good to go for higher EM if you can on the character set prop, but I would recommend just 300 to 400. <clears throat> sorry. I would recommend just 300 to 400 EM for your team members each because 300 to 400 EM is achievable via team buffs <clears throat> and it will be better to wait for actual testing to see the prod distribution of Bloom to see whether to go further and who to go further on. Okay? So lastly, 300 to 400 EM is obviously assuming you pump your little HP to at least 50k. But I definitely go in, recommend going higher HP based on the above. Now, for C2 Bountiful Core, at C2, Bountiful Calls always perform better than Hyper Boom Search Project at 70k HP and 60k HP. Even if you go up to 1800 EM, it is always better than Hyper Bloom and Virgin. This is great for C6 build wise in terms of the stats, and I'll address this in the next video because I'm greedy guy, okay? Like I said earlier in the specification, I want to optimize both the body call, full call, and her personal damage if I'm using her as main DPS. It's not just a, oh, just use HP Hydro Creep. May not necessarily be the case, but I'll, 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 we'll run through and do the comparison later in the next math guide. Also, 400 EM with C2 Bountiful Core is now approximately 850 EM Hyperbone Sesperjan at 70 HP and 500 EM at 50 HP. So it has a whopping 450 EM lead over Hyperbone Sesperjan and 100 EM lead at 50k HP. So 450 EM is at 70k HP Nilo. At 50k HP Nilo, you still get a 100 EM lead at C2. Even if they are on par, it's still very good for Bountiful Core because you gotta remember that Bountiful Core has a lower base multiplier than Hyperboom's project, which is maybe the reason why everyone thinks that Bountiful Core is not great. But I hope that this video shows you how good it becomes with the HP scaling. Okay? And if you have C2, it just leaves burgeoning and hyperbole in the dust, to be honest. Reaction damage wise, it really leaves them in the dust. So I'll say with this view in mind, her HP is definitely her highest priority. I'll address how to distribute her stats in this guide, okay? So in the video series wise, we have done the D2K analysis, we have done the Bountiful Core versus Hyperboom's Aspergen with the uh, HP versus EM schooling in mind. Next, we'll do Bloom Core for uh, main DPS first. Uh, okay. Main DPS first. Then the off field enabler. Alright. And obviously we have a... I will, I will still provide a little bit of artifact comparison in the Bloomcom video itself. But we'll do a more catch-all kind of scenario when we do the artifact comparison video. But this won't come so soon. Probably after I finish this Bloomcom video, maybe the main DPS and off you, so that's two more videos, right? Once those are done, then I'll probably have to go back to Sino. Because we are getting really close to Sino release date, yeah? Okay? Because we have the live stream coming. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. I hope the content has been helpful to you guys. Really, for you guys to appreciate how is Spotify Core's performance versus Hyperbloom slash Burgeon at the varying levels of Nilo's HP and why it's important to go for Nilo's HP. Okay? If you like the content, remember my video and click subscribe for more. Bye!